Hi, I'm Mandy Friedman, licensed professional clinical counselor and clinically certified domestic violence counselor. I'm the creator of SNAP, Survivors of Narcissistic and Abusive Personalities, which is an educational recovery program for survivors of narcissistic abuse. I'm also the owner of Claremont Mental Health. This is for people in recovery from abuse who are beginning to date again, or really anyone who is dating who would like to try to avoid abusive, jealous, controlling, and toxic people. It's hard to figure it out at first, right? When we're getting to know someone for the first time, we're trying not to be judgmental, we're trying to see them in the best light possible, we don't want to jump to conclusions, so we kind of tend to ignore red flags or, as I like to say, the dots, right? Sometimes we don't know something is a dot until it has other dots that it connects with. So if you didn't catch the red flag in the beginning while you were dating this person, don't beat yourself up, right? That's why we're making the video. It's very common for us to not see these things early. But then later on down the road, if we're honest, if we look back at that abusive relationship or that toxic relationship, there were things in the beginning that were clues and signs. Okay, pushing you for sex pretty frequently, pretty heavily. Now, you can assume the person is sexually attracted to you, right? They don't need to continue to express how sexually attracted to you that they are all the time, asking you to send them pics and things of that nature. The person that is going to be the healthiest person for you will let you know that they are sexually attracted to you, but then they will respect you and they will allow that to happen naturally without pushing heavily for sex or for sexual content or for um, sexting and things of that nature, right? We want those things to happen naturally in a respectful way with consent over time and not under pressure. So if someone's pressuring you all the time for sex, mm, could be a red flag. We're looking for series of behavior, patterns of behavior that can indicate to us that this is not a good relationship for us, okay? They ask you about your sexual history. Now, there are ways that people ask you about your sexual history that seem reasonable, and usually that would have to do with their morals, their values, their religion. In other words, that if they are going to be with you, they need to know how many people you've been with, what types of sexual acts you've participated in, and so on and so forth. And I'm here to tell you today that your sexual history is nobody's business under any circumstances and you do not have to share those things with someone. If someone is pushing you for that information, it's probably because they intend to control you coercively and that they're going to abuse you um, sexually and humiliate you sexually as well. They're going to find out that you've been with, you know, whatever they think too many people are, and then they're going to continue to talk to you and treat you disrespectfully as if that you are promiscuous or that you're, you know, um, damaged goods because you've had sexual experiences as an adult before meeting them, which is very reasonable, right? You're a grown up. You're allowed to have sex with the people that you want to have sex with, and that's not anyone's business. So if somebody's really like, so what's your body count? Um, or, you know, I'm very firm in my faith and um, I would like to, you know, save myself for marriage or um, when I'm dating someone I like to take my time and having sex with them because it's really important to me that we're like pure, or that you're pure. Um, and so therefore I'm going to need to know about your sexual history if we're going to be in a serious intimate partner relationship. Nope. No, sir. Nope. You don't get to know those things right? Not that you won't ever tell them, but you will tell them when they have the status in your life that would be deserving of that intimate information. Not when they're first dating you within the first six months or say that they want to, they're thinking they want to get married and they're saying, well, you know what, I'd like to put a ring on your finger, but I don't know where you've been. Well, you're never going to know because it's none of your business. All right. So anybody that tells you otherwise, don't listen to them. You do not have to tell anybody about your sexual history, and that is a red flag when somebody's asking you about that, even when it seems innocent. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget that therapists need affirmation too, so please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.